Hello, Chris. Hey, Ben. It's me, Ben. Hello, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so, regular listeners will know that we uh, we try to put out a Westerns by the Decade episode at the beginning of every month. But uh, that's not the case for October, is it? No, we're pushing it back a little bit late, and it's all your fault. It's 100% my fault. I am going on vacation, so we didn't have time to record the full episode and get it out to you in time, but look for that later on this month. But we haven't given up. Stay tuned for more of that. Uh, a few announcements. You can now subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts. So if you're an iPhone user, you can look forward to that. Please be sure to give us a subscribe over there. Very exciting. And we have a schnazzy website, popstorian.com. Browse on over there and check it out. It's got all the episodes of our podcast available there, as well as our Twitter feed. So I thought we would do a recommendation episode. We haven't done one of those for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. What are you watching, listening to, reading at the moment, then? Something that you would recommend? So, I want to talk about The Fly. Um, it's a nice seasonal flick, a nice spooky movie for the Halloween season. And I, I do need to be specific here. Um, this particular review is about the 1986 remake with Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis and John Getz, not the... Uh, the 1958 variety with Vincent Price that I'm talking about today. It is a uh, nice, creepy example of 80s horror. So if that's your jam, you'll definitely like it for your Halloween spooky movie. Uh, but also, it is a very operatic feature film love story. I've not actually seen The Fly, so do tell on the How's it a love story. Um, so this particular version, more so than the original adaptation, it's based on a short story originally. Um, but the this second feature film version is about a scientist who invents teleportation and uh, a journalist that he kind of falls in love with. And uh, her ex is the editor of the magazine that she works for. So they kind of form a, a bit of a love triangle. Uh, that, and those are the relationships that kind of dominate the story. The uh, famous metamorphosis that happens is when the, uh, the scientist steps into his teleporter and is inadvertently followed by a fly. And uh, in this version, in the original, it was sort of an instant metamorphosis. He kind of instantly becomes a fly. But this yeah. is this is more of a gradual unfolding where she kind of has to choose uh, whether or not to abandon him or how to handle this uh, new version of him as he sort of goes through this slow process. Uh, and some of the bonus features in the audio commentary, they talk about comparing it to... They treated it as if it was like he had cancer and was slowly oh, okay. dying of cancer. Um, so if that gives you an idea of how such a monster movie... But it also fits right in with some of the stuff we've talked about on this podcast before with King Kong and the monster movie tropes or even Creature from the Black Lagoon to where the monster's kind of a sympathetic character with a lot of human attributes that kind of uh, yeah. makes him a very tragic figure. So it's got a lot of those classic monster movie elements. Uh, but definitely definitely an adult movie for adult audiences. It's a bit more gruesome than would have been popular in the 50s. Yeah. If you listen to, the, to my recommendations <laughs> for the past few I've done, you'd think that I'm some sort of horror junkie. I'm not. <laughs> it just so happens to be 
what's been on the top of my mind at the recording of these recommendation episodes. But yeah, definitely at least four stars out of five, if not more. Very well-crafted piece of cinema. Have you watched uh, a lot of David Cronenberg? I've watched uh, some of his major works. I wouldn't say I exhausted his catalog. But uh, Scanners, The Brood, those films. Yeah. He's a very uh, interesting director in that he loves some of the gross-out horror stuff. But he treats it with a great deal of uh, sincerity. He's more of a, a horror auteur, I think. But of course, that's a, a matter of opinion. Well, I have also been kind of going into the, the horror genre a little bit. Tis the season. It is. I have been listening, uh, well, a few weeks ago, I recommended a podcast for Wolverine Marvel Stitcher podcast. Yeah. That I actually went and listened to some. (laughs) Yeah. And you liked it, right? I did. I, uh, I heard an advertisement for another, uh, podcast while listening to that. It's called the white vault. The white Um, vault. The white vault. And I uh, just finished up the first season of that, and it was it was very good. I've been, been enjoying it very much. It is a horror in its own right, or genre, about a uh, crew, the, the team that goes up to kind of the Arctic Circle to just investigate a strange signal and to fix it for this uh, mysterious company. Is this a while period piece or present day it, or it's set in the modern modern era. Gotcha. And uh they go up there and are trapped by a very serious storm and they're up there for quite a few weeks as the story progresses. It actually progresses quite slowly. And it's um I guess it's kind of in the same same vein as the first Wolverine season where it's told through a series of documentation pieces. You don't actually like hear the story as it happens. It's it's retold through notes and recordings and different things like that. So it's quite interesting. I think that's a great technique for telling story stories through audio. Yeah, but uh, I won't uh, won't. Sp- give any spoilers it's uh, essentially called the white vault because they find a cave under the under the ice and it's a vault and it's white because of all the ice uh, so but uh no it's very interesting if you like uh, if you like horror if you like adventure podcast very spooky it's kind of spooky i like it yeah I will definitely add that to my list. You do. I'm also uh, I'm pretty excited. I think uh, the second season's already out, so I'm going to see what they do, if they continue that story or they just have like a different story, kind of like American Horror Show or something like that. Horror right, stories. if it's going to be Horror. anthologized or something. Yeah. Have you watched a show called The Terror? You know, I didn't get a chance to watch the show... But I really enjoyed the book. I read the book by Dan Simmons. And I I remember finishing the book like two or three years ago Mm -hmm. and being like, I would watch that as a show. And then they made the show and I haven't watched it yet. (laughs) That's uh, the way it goes. It's hard to find time to keep up with everything. I Um, know it. Did you, uh, would you say this is similar to that in terms of uh, genre or style? I... I think so. I think there is something scary about going to the Arctic because, or, or even Antarctic because it's, it's not hospitable at all. Mm-hmm. It's obviously cold. In the Arctic, there's polar bears who will eat you, by the way. Polar bears are not cute, fluffy. They will eat you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, I think that's 
kind of part of the part of the the genre it's that it's it's not a fun place to visit and i kind of i don't know i i've kind of been drawn to a couple of those stories there's another one i really want to read um by uh lovecraft that oh, yeah. uh called the uh, i think was it called the mountains of insanity or is that from princess bride um <laughs> that would be the cliffs of insanity of there's a there is a book from Lovecraft that uh, they're either in the, the the mountains or in the Arctic. I don't remember. I want to read that one too. But every time I read one of these or listen to this podcast, I always want to go to like Planet Earth and watch the Arctic episodes. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. That's kind of I guess a weird Halloween tradition. Go watch Planet Earth. This has been a special spooky mini-sode of the Pop Story in Podcast. Be sure to subscribe. And on that note, you have a good Halloween. (laughs) Well, we'll we'll be back before Halloween. Oh, uh, at at the Mountains of Madness. Thank you. The Mountains of Madness. That's what you're thinking of. Yes. Some help from my friend, Mr. Google. So yeah, be sure to check out uh, The Fly and The White Vault and let us know what you think. You can contact us through our Twitter, our Facebook, our Instagram, our... uh, What other ways can you get in touch with us? Email. Facebook, email. Carrier Pigeon. um, YouTube. I don't know if you can message on YouTube. You can uh, send us a messenger boy. Yes, yes you can. Uh, candy grams. Um, I don't think you can do that, actually, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, definitely get a uh, contact with us. And let us know how we're doing and how you enjoy the, the show. Or even if you don't enjoy the show. Tell us how much you would like to enjoy the show. <laughs> Tell us how we can improve. Exactly. All right. Well, that's it for now. We will see you next time on the Pop Story and Podcast.